Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Day in the Life of Vintage Classic Specialist and the weekly recap. So let's talk a little bit about what I did today first and then we'll, uh, we'll kind of recap the week from there. So today one of the main things I did was the alignment on the 69 EV Beetle. Uh, I think I mentioned yesterday I'd probably go ahead and do it. We'll have to still do a final alignment when the car is done and sitting at the proper height and so on the car is sitting a bit high and back now it's going to have a lot more weight back there when we put in the ev motor and the battery pack and then a bit more weight in front when the front ev uh, battery pack goes in so uh, we may have to adjust the rear torsion bars the front suspension is adjustable although it's probably sitting at about the height that i'm going to want it right now uh, it'll go down some once we get some weight up there, so it'll have to be adjusted too, but it's easy because it's an adjustable front end. But nonetheless, I went ahead and did a preliminary alignment on the car um, just to get things close. Actually, I got it pretty dead on, but again, they're going to change. The alignment is going to change when the car is, is sitting at the proper height. Uh, but if you're going to do it, you might as well do it right, and then I'll come back and it should only need some minor tweaking when the car is uh, leveled out correctly. So let's talk about the alignment real quick. Um, let's actually talk about some of the tools that we use here. So one of the basic things we use is a set of uh, what's called um, toe plates. So basically the way these work is each one leans against a wheel like this. So it sits on the ground basically and then leans up against the wheel or the tire really kind of squares against it. And then you see there's these uh, slots in it. And on one of the toe plates the slot is equipped with little magnets and then it comes with a pair of matching um, tape measures and so on one side the tape measure sort of uh, clicks on to the magnet so it holds it you stretch the um, the tape measures across the car one in front of the wheel one in the back of the wheel and then you measure you see what the measurements are as it comes through the slot on on this side and then the difference is your toe in or toe out so really nice to have. You can do it by putting strings along the car and then measuring from the string to the tire. Uh, you know, I don't think that's really as precise of a method as doing it this way. And you got to monkey around with strings and making sure that they're parallel to the car. Uh, to me, it's just a hassle. I just prefer to use the toe plates to get an accurate measurement. The other thing is nice is when these are leaned up against the wheels um, or tires on the car, is you can kind of stand back and you can visualize whether or not the, the car is going to track straight or not. They give you a really nice reference to see that, you know, for example, when you're doing the front end alignment, you can see that toe plate pretty nicely along the front wheel there, uh, easier from the front. So when I did it, I had the car pushed back quite a ways. I stood in the front of the car, looked back at it, and I could tell, uh, you know, whether or not the steering was aligned by seeing whether those toe plates were parallel to the car, kind of canted off one side or the other. So I basically got the steering wheel uh, lined up centered at the same time that I did the alignment for toe on the front. The other thing is checking the camber of the car. This being a ball joint car, it's pretty easy to adjust camber. So the way we do that is with a gauge like this. As you can probably imagine, it picks up three points around the wheel and then it essentially has bubble levels on it that have um, about a quarter degree uh, little gradations on it. So you see where the middle of the bubble is and where you are. So the, I think it was the driver's side was right on at, at zero camber, which is where I like to set them. The passenger side, I think was half a degree positive, if I remember right. So got it dialed in and then went and rechecked and readjusted slightly the uh, the toe uh, on these cars the camber um, when you adjust the camber it changes the toe a little bit um, that's probably actually true of most cars but certainly on these so i got that um, dialed in uh, the other thing you see sitting here are called turn plates so what these do is when you're doing an alignment you actually park each front uh, tire of the car on a turn plate and these actually have a big bearing in the center. And so what happens is when you're making adjustments to the toe of the car, instead of having the car sit on the, you know, the floor of your shop, concrete or whatever it is, where there's a lot of friction, you know, you can go 
if you don't have a set of these, you can go and you can make changements to the toe by adjusting the length of the um, of the tie rods and nothing actually happens because the tire has enough grip on the floor that it just kind of binds and it doesn't really change. So really what you have to do is like roll the car back and forth to try and get things to kind of resettle in. When you use um, when you use these type of things, the friction is low enough that pretty much whatever change you make to the, the toe in is directly, uh, you know, you can read it right away without having to roll the car around. So it's just kind of a convenience to, uh, when you're setting up the, the toe to have the, everything moving freely. The other thing that you can use these for, which I checked on the car, is for adjusting the, um, the caster. And so when you adjust or check caster, what you gotta do is you gotta rotate each wheel from, from zero degrees to 20 degrees. You, uh, you set your caster gauge at zero using, using this on here, and then you rotate it to 20 degrees in the other direction and then basically the difference between those two is your caster. So this car right now has quite a bit of rake on it, which actually subtracts from caster. So right now we're running about one degree caster on both sides. I suspect that when the car is leveled out, that'll probably be around four or five degrees caster, which, which should be fine. I basically have the front end adjusted at max caster right now with the uh, eccentrics on there, but I have not put in any caster shims so when the car is all leveled out, if it doesn't have enough caster, then I'll throw some caster shims in the bottom of the beam and kick it out a little bit, and that'll give it some more caster. So, yeah, it was good to get the car aligned. Uh, the back, the toe-in was fine, so I left it alone. And so there you go. That's pretty much all I did on this car for today, other than some errand running and so on. Not worth talking about. The... 59 euro bug got a little bit of love today the owner brought the keys by which we did not have the exterior door handles were actually in the locked position uh, they weren't on the car but i couldn't install them because they were they were locked so um, he brought the keys by and that allowed me to go ahead and install these so this car um, doors open and close really nice now after finding the correct striker plates for it and getting these. And then likewise, I was previously not able to install his deck lid handle because it was also in the lock position. So again, now that I have the keys, I was able to get that installed. So yeah, just little things. This car is almost done. Uh, we'll probably finish it up Monday. We've got to add a deck lid spring to it. And then there's a radio, which you can see sitting on the floor there. We're gonna install that. It's not going to be hooked up, but we'll be installed it or install it rather to fill that hole in the dash and it'll look really nice. And then I think he said he's going to be out of town for a week or so. So he'll probably come get this car the week after next, but it should be done uh, probably Monday. So we can kind of get it off the books in that sense. So weekly recap time. Um, huge, huge, huge week for the EV Beetle. When we started the week, we had a pan sitting over here. We had a body uh, sitting over here. The body was pretty much a bare body uh, with the headliner in it. So we went ahead and had our neighbor shop, Octavio, install the rear carpet before we put the body on. And then we did a bunch of things on the body. So we added the, uh, the trim on the side. We added running boards. We added engine compartment seals. Um, we added the, uh, the bumper grommets, just tons and tons of things. We, uh, did some more work on the, on the dash, getting it ready. Once the body and pan went together, I cleaned up the steering wheel, uh, and put it on. And this is just a steering wheel we're using temporarily for moving the car around. Um, got the headlight rings on the car. So yeah, then the body and chassis went together uh, a couple days ago. Got the steering all hooked up on it. Um, let's see what else. And then yesterday the tires came, so we got those mounted. Got the car finally sitting on the ground. And some other little things. Got the gas cap or gas, well in this case the EV charging port uh, door installed. Got the windshield installed. Got a rear view mirror, we installed that. We've got 
sun visor. So yeah, huge, huge week for this car. I mean, this car went from being a chassis sitting on one side of the shop and a body sitting on the other side to something that really looks like almost a complete car. Obviously without a, a, a motor, it's gonna get an EV motor and then the battery and some more interior, but yeah, huge progress on this week. So we're really happy with how this car's coming along. Uh, we're really loving how it looks. Uh, great choice on the owner's behalf on the, uh, the Dove Gray accented uh, Fuchs along with the diamond blue paint color. Really, really a gorgeous car, gorgeous combination. So that's pretty much it for this week, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you next week. Take care.